Welcome to the unit Dyeing Process for Natural Fibers. In this unit, you will gain an understanding of the dyeing process for cellulosic and protein fibers. This unit comprises of two modules and a final review section that invites you to reflect on what you have learnt. By end of this unit, students will be able to describe the dyeing process for cellulosic fibers using various dyes. Describe the dyeing process for protein fibers using different kinds of dyes. The dyeing process for cellulosic fibers using various dyes. Application of direct dyes. Direct dyes are dyed using exhaust dyeing method. In this method, the direct dyes are dissolved carefully, filtered and then added to the dye bath. The cellulosic substrate is placed in the dye bath at room temperature and dyeing is continued at the stage temperature for 15 to 20 minutes. Then common salt or global salt is added portion wise over a period of 45 to 60 minutes while the temperature is slowly raised to bring to the boiling temperature. Additions are made by starting with a small amount of salt followed by larger portions. For example, the salt to be added is divide, divided into four portions, one eighth, one eighth, one fourth and half of the total amount. The total amount of salt is usually in the range of 5 to 25 grams depends on the depth of shade, liquor ratio and the type of direct dyes or that are used. If the shade is satisfactory, the dyed material is then rinsed with cold water. At this stage, an after treatment may be followed to improve wash fastness of the direct dyes. After treatment. In a typical after treatment, the bath is prepared with the proper amount of cationic fixing agent and a small amount of acetic acid, the pH of the pot is to be maintained between 5 to 6. For example, 1 to 2 percent of one weight of fiber of the fixing agent for the material dyeing with 1 percent of a direct dye. The dyed material is placed in the dye bath and treated at room temperature for 15 to 20 minutes. Then the treated material is rinsed with cold water and dried. The light fastness of some direct dyes can be improved by an after treatment with copper sulphate. Small improvements of both light and wash fastness in after treatment can be achieved by a mixture of copper sulphate and cationic fixing agent. Because of harmful ecological effects, many transition metal compounds including copper compounds are subject to effluent discharge regulations. Stripping of direct dyes. A complete stripping of direct dyes consists of two steps. First, the dyed material is treated at the boil with a seco string agent such as EDTA, example 1 to 2 grams per liter. After this, the material is treated in second bath with a reducing or an oxidizing agent. Application of reactive dyes by batch dyeing process consists of three stages. First, exhaust dyeing, second, fixation and third one is after scouring. This is a typical procedure for exhaust dyeing at high temperature. The dye bath temperature is set at 50 degree centigrade and the pre-dissolved reactive dyes are added. Then the substrate is placed into the dye bath and the temperature is raised at 1 degree per minute to 80 degrees centigrade about 30 minutes. During this time, the salt, example, 100% own weight of fiber 
depending on liquor ratio and depth of shade is added portion wise. Dyeing continues at 80 degree centigrade for an additional 15 minutes after which sodium carbonate is added uh, over 15 minutes. The dyeing machine is run at 80 degree centigrade for 45 to 70 minutes during which, during which time fixation takes place. The dyed material is given two more rinses, first with warm water followed by cold water and then dried. Next we will discuss about application of wet dyes. Wet dyes are insoluble organic compounds. They are widely used for cellulose fibers and can be used for protein fiber as well as nylon fibers. They produce good color range but have limited selection of orange, blue and bright green. Large amount of dyes are required for deep shades. They have excellent fastness to washing. They also have very good fastness to crocking, perspiration, chlorine bleaching, oxidizing, oxidizing and high temperature treatments. However, this is an expensive process as there is a high initial cost of dye and method of application. The conventional exhaust method of wet dye consists of four major steps. Reduction that is called watting, dyeing, oxidation and soaping. Reduction otherwise it is called as watting. At this stage the wet dye is converted into soluble form. The dye is first mixed with the proper amount of sodium hydroxide, then the reducing agent is added and the temperature is raised to the recommended 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 sorry. Then the reducing agent is added and the temperature is raised to the recommended temperature. The time and the amounts of reducing agent and base needed for specific dyes are shown in this table. These are the appropriate values for dyeing medium shades at a liquor ratio of 1 is to 10. The reducing agents most commonly used are sodium hydrosulfide and thiourea dioxide. Hydrosulfide get oxidized when exposed to air in the presence of moisture or in a solution. It is also very unstable at high temperature and therefore should be dissolved in cold water just before adding it to the dye bath. Thiourea dioxide is much more expensive than sodium hydrosulfide. However, a much smaller quantity is needed to reduce the same amount of wet dye. Thiourea dioxide is also significantly easy to handle and more stable than sodium hydrosulfide and it is not affected by moisture. The use of soft water throughout the dyeing process is must with wet dyes. Since the so soluble liquor salts will form insoluble salts with calcium or magnesium ions as well as with transition metal. Therefore, in addition to using soft water, it is common to add secretoring agent such as EDTA to the dye bath. Certain wet dyes may undergo over reduction if the reduction procedure is not followed carefully. The factors leading to over reductions are use of large amount of reducing agents, insufficient amount of sodium hydroxide in the dye bath, dyeing at higher temperature than recommended. Therefore, in the application procedure, it is recommended to add sodium hydroxide before the reducing agent. Dyeing procedure. This covered material is inserted in the dye bath and the temperature is gra gradually raised to the dyeing temperature about 27 degree centigrade to 60 degree centigrade depending on the type of dyes used. Dyeing continues for the proper amount of time and salt may be added to assist in exhaustion. Since atmospheric oxygen reacts with the reducing agent as well as the reduced wet dyes, additional amounts of the reducing agent and the base are added during the dyeing stage. The dye bath is checked occasionally to ensure that the pH of the bath is sufficiently basic. Here 
phenol pethylene paper should turn into red as a checking point and that a sufficient amount of the reducing agent present in the dye bath that means the yellow vat testing should turn into blue. Oxidation. Before oxidation, the material is rinsed to remove residues of sodium hydroxide and reducing agent. Common oxidizing agents used today are hydrogen peroxide and sodium perborate. When using hydrogen peroxide, high concentration of alkali must be avoided to prevent damage to the material. Soaping. This step consists of treating the dyed material with soap at or near the boiling temperature for 10 to 20 minutes. Soap at the boil increases the wash fastness of the dyes and yields their final shade. The dyeing procedure is then completed by rinsing with hot and cold water. Application of azoic or naphthol dyes. Naphthalation. Paste the naphthol with turkey red oil or sulfonated oil and a small amount of water. Raise the temperature to 85 degrees centigrade temperature. Add the required amount of alkali in the form of a concentrated solution. Continue to heat for a few minutes while stirring. If needed, raise the temperature to the boiling temperature until a clear solution is obtained. The dye bath is set with water and naphthol solution. Then material is entered and worked for 30 minutes. If required, salt is added during the naphthalation. After naphthalation, excess naphthol solution present in the material is removed. This is done by centrifuging, skewing, vacuum extraction or other means of hydro extraction. The purpose of this step is to remove as much of the naphthol solution as possible in order to avoid crocking problem. Coupling. For the coupling to take place at a desirable rate without affecting stability of the naphthalate or the disonium salt, a specific pH must be maintained for each combination used. Usually it is in the range of pH between 5 to 7. Often a mixture of acetic acid and sodium acetate is added to the disonium salt solution to act as buffer and maintain a pH of about 5. The naphthalated substrate is immersed in the disonium salt solution at room temperature for 15 to 20 minutes. During this time, coupling reaction would be completed. After treatment, at this stage, the dyed substrate undergoes a vigorous rinsing in order to first to remove unreacted starting material, second remove dye attached to fiber surface and third aggregate the dye molecules to improve wash fastness and yield final shade. Application of sulfur dyes. This is the method of typical bath dyeing. The dye bath is prepared by diluting the soluble sulfur dye with proper amount of water. A small amount of sodium polysulfide, example 1 to 2 percent own weight of fiber and a similar amount of sequestering agent are added and the fibers are introduced into the dye bath at 50 degree centigrade. Sodium chloride 20 to 30 percent own weight of fiber is added portion wise. Example, 1 eighth, 1 eighth, 1 fourth and half of the total amount over period of 20 minutes. While the temperature is gradually raised to the maximum dyeing temperature, usually in the range of 60 to 82 degrees, the dyeing continues at this temperature for about 30 minutes. The material is rinsed well with warm and hot water, oxidized, rinsed, soaked at 82 degrees centigrade, rinsed with mild alkali solution and dried. Next we will learn about the dyeing process for protein fibers like wool and silk by using different classes of dyes. This table displays the general trends in properties of acid dyes. Application of acid dyes to wool. 
the dyeing procedure for acid leveling dyes. Exhaust dyeing is the method of choice for dyeing wool and it is carried out at different stages of production either raw stock that means loose fibers, slubbing that means roving or either yarn or finished garments 